Hello everybody and welcome back to the Lobotomy Corporation. Okay. So, today's plan is relatively simple. I would like to be able to finish off Red Mist because we got really close. I made a couple huge mistakes, but overall, we got really, really close after <clears throat> a handful of attempts. I would like to finally do Tiprith. Now that we have a little bit of an understanding on how the Midnight Ordeals works. Also, I was told there's only three. I thought there was like six. No, there's only three. There's the green, the orange, and the purple. And that's it. Um, so the orange is the food one. Green is the giant death laser. And then purple is the shrines. So, all in all, that's not too bad. I thought it was going to need a lot more memorization. But if it's only three, that is really, really manageable. I am, I am perfectly happy with that. Also, as far as Library of Ruina, the second game in this series... I asked if you guys would like to see me play that after we get the true ending, if I even manage it. Um, if we don't manage it, we'll just have a second playthrough and we'll just speedrun uh, as much as I'm able to get the um, true ending. But after we get that, it has pretty much been an overwhelming yes, we would like to see it. So, Library of Runa will be happening. After we get the true ending, I will be moving on to Library of Runa, so I don't know how the customization works in that, but if it's anything like this game, be sure and let me know if you would like your character carried over to it. I mean, obviously Sally's going to be there, um, and then whoever wants to join Sally in the library is more than welcome to. I'm sure she would appreciate the company. I wish we could make her hair a little bit more pink. I noticed that there was actually a mod where um, you could just make... Uh, th there was a lot more customization for hair colors and such. I was debating getting it just to make Sally's hair as pink as it is down in the bottom right corner. But all in all, I decided, eh, we'll play through mo uh, modless. And then... Maybe sometime in the future we'll uh, return to this game after the true ending and we'll have some modded shenanigans. That can always be fun. Like, one little challenge I was thinking of is basically we have these super OP suits, right? But we can only have one person in every department. So say Gregory has uh, a suit that only takes .2 of all damage, but he's the only one in the control team. Ian has like the a similar suit, but he's the only one in information. And then cent Central Command would be the only one that actually has two. So we would only have 10 just ridiculously OP characters, but the challenge would be the amount of meltdowns and having to work with the um, with the constant power draining from the Quiploth counters, might be really, really, well, I was gonna say fun, but exciting for you to watch. I don't know, that was just an idea I had. It would be something in the future. I, it's not gonna happen for some time, but that's okay. So, today's goal is to finish off the Red Mist and Tiferet. And then we'll also probably take a look at Cheesed. Um, and then we cannot do... Bina's yet until we finished all three and then we're not even close to unlocking uh I don't remember his name gonna be it or no B because I'm pretty sure he's supposed to be B some people wanted some 1v1 time with the red mist so Basie Randy you're gonna be the first one who gets to um you know enjoy a little bit of a 1v1 we're gonna see how that goes, but uh, you know what? I'm sure you'll be fine. Get her! 
21 isn't terrible. Nope. I think his gun is too slow. Eh, I don't know. He's doing it. My only issue with him 1v1-ing her is, um, his gun is freaking slow. Does pretty alright damage, though. I mean, 20 damage to her is kind of legit. Shame no one else can be in the room with him while he's shooting. Otherwise, he will, in fact, shoot and ruin their lives. Ah! Man, the dodge times are actually really smooth. Ow! Okay, except that one. That one doesn't count. So if he goes to the other side of the room and then shoots, he's pretty much guaranteed to get off a shot without actually being hit. There is also what what seems to be a few frames where he can actually dodge uh, mid-animation. Ah! Oh, he did it, but he took a mean left hook directly to the face. Basie Randy, good job. You have successfully done your 1v1. Even though it was only one third of her health, it still counts. All right, Gregory wanted his chance. So he's going to be a lot harder to actually pull this off with because he's got a melee weapon and he's only got HE weapons in suit. Um, so it, his is going to be a little bit harder, but I have full faith. So here's the deal. We need her to start swinging. And then we're going to move behind her. Attack. Okay. Okay, no, he's going to take significantly longer. But he's quick on his feet. As long as he's quick on his feet, he will not get hit. Man, she, it feels like she is swinging increasingly faster. Alright. I'll tell you what, the kiting game is on point. I'd say Gregory... Oh, Alright, well, he, he flubbed that attack, but that's okay. Because he still got it off. Definitely don't want to get hit by that one. Because if he gets hit, he is in for a world of pain. Oh! Ah! Yep! Oh, and he gets slowed. Ah! Okay, so yeah, Gregory is, um, a lot more susceptible to her damage than Facey Randy is. Mainly because of the, the whole lack of range thing. But, I'd say he can pretty much pull it off. Albeit, it'll take a while. Ooh! Ah, Alright, he's fine. You know what? He's about to run headfirst into mountain. Gregory, you did absolutely flawless, my friend. You did so much damage despite being in an HE weapon and gear. You did perfect. Melee phase 2 to 3, I'd say, isn't nearly as useful because DeCapo is going to destroy you and then smile is no doubt going to do the same thing her red weapon though ouch hmm her red weapon doesn't seem that bad but decapo is absolutely overkill we'll return you to normal red mist you will once again be our beloved friend and sephra ah Well, we're not going to kite to the other side, I can tell you that much. What? That still hit? Okay, I, hang on. That was some freaking tomfoolery that just happened. What was that? What are these hits? Are 
are you? I'm, how am I supposed to get out of this room without just... The time has come. My dear employees, we did not get here through anything other than sheer determination and teamwork. We will revert the red mist back to the Sephira we know and love, to the employee who has been with us since the very beginning. We will revert her to what she once was. Or we will die! Okay, uh, gonna be honest, I have not been able to practice the fourth phase at all. This is my third attempt. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm ner I'm really nervous. No one has died yet. Actually, no one. We suppressed Big Bird. Rabbit suppressed Mountain. Uh, they also got her into Phase 3 because the end of her Phase 2 is freaking devastating, so I just didn't want to deal with it. So, we're also going to test out my theory about the slow bullets. So, Sarah? Run. Oh god, you are going to take so much damage. Oh, man, she's gonna take so much damage. She might be dead. She actually, like, seriously might be dead. I don't know if that's gonna help her. Sarah? You might be dead. Oh, it slowed her down! Run! Okay, okay, we're fine. She's fine. <gasps> the slow bullets work! <laughs> Oh, no one's dead and we're at the phase four. This is a dead end. This room is torture. If she gets down in that room, we're practically dead already. Okay, well, she slowed, so we're just gonna see what happens. Okay. Both of you, keep running. You guys, get into this room. Okay, she's, she's uh, speeding up again. Oh, crap. I, I, I still cannot see who she has marked. Ah! Okay, she stopped. She stopped. Okay, I want you to circle around and go back. Okay, now's our chance. Do as much damage as you can manage. The instant I see her sword lift up, we're evacuating the room. <gasps> they might be able to finish it. I don't know if I should run. You're right there. I, I don't know. If, I don't think we should run. I think we can do it. She's running. Oh, Facey Randy, run! Okay, 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 okay. We can do this, we can do this. We can do it. Facey Randy, you have to win the door. You have to win the door race. If you do not win the door race, you are dead. Here we go. He has to win the door race, the door race, or he is dead. Okay, back in. <gasps> he made it! He made it! Get her! Get her! Get her! Somebody hit her, please! Yes! We finally did it! <laughs> no one died! Nobody freaking died. We actually did it with nobody dying. It took an hour. An hour of grueling. Just slowly whittling her down. We did it. Yes. Oh. Uh. Uh. Okay, a lot of people said that I made a mistake by not taking, um, the abnormality, the, the, uh, the abnormalities from last time. So one of them is here again, so we're gonna take, we're gonna take this one. 
Oh, we did it! Why are you looking? Why are you looking at me like that? Why do you think? Because you're insane. Because I did. <laughs> I'm calm now. I just, I had <laughs> took like a five minute break just to walk around. That was <laughs> that was ridiculous. That was so just. Oh. Why are you looking at me like that? You look like a thief just turned up on your doorstep. I honestly didn't expect to see you here. Or, well, to be exact, I knew you would come here eventually, but I didn't expect it would be this soon. You had such a sour expression when we talked, but you actually liked me, didn't you? What the... You know... I don't have any true contact with the lives of the people from the back streets, nor the pain they go through. I don't know if this is Angela, but the color makes me think it's Angela. That's that's why her voice is being used. Perhaps I have been living a more affluent yet cowardly life compared to them. Or is this um A's girlfriend that I can't Carmen, that's it. Is this Carmen or is this um or is this Angela? Yeah, mm, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna assume this is Carmen on second thought. From that, I've always felt so ashamed of everything, even to be graced by a small ray of sunshine. It wasn't always all that rough. I understand that it must have been a hard decision to come here, so thank you. Sooner or later, we will have to deal with the unexpected hardships here. There are just too many problems to try and solve in peaceful ways. The real reason I chose to speak with you out of all the other organizations or fixers that day was actually because of something rather trivial. What was it? For being honest. Honest? I thought I could barter with you for cheaper prices. Looks like it was a mistake to come here. I'll be going now. Please, he hear me out. I saw you pay for the funeral expenses of an old lady whom you didn't even know. I truly admired your kindness. I even looked forward to seeing it myself. Corpses can cause an entire hallway to be infested with vermin if they aren't buried properly. Besides, I just wanted to repay her for treating me to meals a couple of times. Understand, I've never been, clo I've never been close to being a kind person my entire life. Why do you keep smiling? Just happy to be great at discerning the best of the best. Okay, it was Carmen. Alright, I, I, <laughs> glad I decided to change my voice. Carmen could back up what she said. She truly did have a sharp eye for people. The tale of how she built her reputation could fill a chronicle of history books, and then some. The only problem was that Carmen was too wrapped up with taking care of others. She never had a moment to take good care of herself. We were on such a delightful upturn back then, it's almost cruel to bring those memories back up. We were flying towards a limitless world that never seemed to end. By the way, who's a guy glaring at me? Oh, that's A. He's always had a serious look on his face. I beg of you, please protect the people here. I know I can trust you with this. From the past to the present, abnormalities have wandered the facility, killing numerous people. Despite my reputation, there were too many things that I just couldn't save. When I think about it, my entire life was far from one of justice. You probably wouldn't know much about the back streets, seeing as you stayed in the nest your whole life. Those streets were were a place where there was no need for justice, morality, or any other pedestals like those. If you've never been there before, you won't understand. How agonizing and miserable the stories of people who live there are. How they're robbed of the chance to live a legitimate life. How unfair and unjust life is there. All I learned was how to survive this miserable existence. But Carmen told me she wouldn't give up on anyone, even people like us. She also told us that the weak, who had willing spirits, could someday possess enough power to cut off the head. Such an absurd and ridiculous thing to say. Why couldn't I just keep on with how my life was before? 
I'm not smart enough for all those complicated calculations. I can't even write a logical or coherent report. The only thing I was able to do was draw my sword against those who opposed us. All my life, I only used my skills for my own survival. But that day, I had never felt more proud to be able to protect others. However, I wasn't able to protect anybody in the end. That cut me deeply. I was filled with anger and lost my mind for it. You did protect someone. True. You and that other person survived thanks to me. I thought I had lost Carmen's will forever. And after all said and done, I had to have carried that will all the way here somehow, right? I feel like I can cat a, catch a bit of a breath now. When we first reawakened in metal, we could feel the exact moment our final breath stopped, lodged into us like glass shards. Stupidly, I woke up with only rage left in my heart for the abnormalities. You miss her, right? I do too. I don't think she'll ever come back. I'll never get to see her shameless smile ever again. The one that made even people like me follow her. Or the light that radiated from her, flowing so much that one couldn't hold all of it with both hands. But her will and promise will always remain the same, even after an eternity has passed. It will be a place where she can live on, even after death. I thought you were a humanoid! If you happen to remember it, please tell me. Tell me the gift she left behind for us. The courage to protect. 50% germination. Why is she a box? I thought she was a humanoid. <laughs> now we'll never see those gorgeous hips again. Oh. Who's the real winner here? It's not me. No. <laughs> I had wanted to free myself from the pain, but I realized it was impossible. It was only recently that I found my answer. Is it that I have to accept the pain of, as something I've borne from the beginning, that I can be set free? Manager, if you are suffering too, just take in the pain and accept it. You don't have to keep changing things if it's too hard for you. I know you want to keep pressing on in any way possible. You felt lost and scared of the present, so all you could do was blindly trace along the way through the dark. I admired such determination at first, but now you look so pathetic. How long do you think you can keep this up? Will you ever make it to the end? I mean, I just beat Gabura. So I think my determination is not in question. This place, where there was once only silence, perhaps because it was only you and I here, it has gotten a bit livelier thanks to the Sephiroth. Unlike me, they were weak and lacked rationality. They made so many mistakes that greatly annoyed me. I did not approve of you placing the Sephiroth here. However, you told me that your atonement and the awakening of the Sephiroth were key to the untying of this knot I lie in. I didn't know what you were talking about. You also told me I wouldn't understand. You even blocked me from interfering with that relationship, saying that it must be left as solely your role. You were right, right as always. Even if I stay here repeating this endlessly, I suppose I still won't be worthy of understanding it till the end. To quote one of your favorite lines, a machine must behave as a machine. So I had to play the role of the observer, the only role you bothered to give me, enduring all the pain that others forgot. I don't think I'll have to point that out again. Are we managing to get closer to our goal? On the contrary to what people say, it appears that aging does not necessarily bring greater wisdom. Just look at this old man, going through what feels like an endless cycle of intermittent greed, the obsession over things that have passed, pointless regret, 
now trapped in a routine of staring at the iron hands of time without reason. By the way, I've always wanted to ask you something. I noticed you wear a sad expression on your face each time one of the employees dies. Just as I have become an old man, no human being is free from the cycle of life and death. As our research was to cure the disease, not to live forever. How about an example? Do you remember that one employee? The one who was nice and upfront with you? He passed away recently. When he received the letter he was accepted into Lobotomy Corporation, he never would have expected to meet such a futile demise. If I wanted, I could have brought him back to you. But I did not. It is in the order of, the, of this place that an empty spot shall always soon be filled. Did you finally discover the secret of this place? Lives are trivial here. The tenuous hold on life can be severed so easily. And yet, may come back as if nothing happened. We reached a point in which we don't even need to mourn their deaths. An employee who died just yesterday may come back from my simple call. Yet another employee may o never open their eyes again from a single wave of my hand. That is what death means here, eh? It is neither honorable nor noble, nor it is miserable or cruel like you may think it to be. So please, don't punish yourself too much. I do not wish to see you suffer from such a personal and insignificant thing, for the future will bring you much more pain to bear. Clear the day with, more, with five or more employees whose prudence is a hundred or more. What is rationality? We see and analyze through the eyes of rationality. However, its prowess and usage differs from person to person. Crude prudence blinds you to the true worth and, and the circumstances around you. An excessive prudence morphs into a knife that cuts you. You may be soundly rational when you observe the world and its, pe and its people. Gaburra synchronization complete. The maximum number of ego that can be acquired from each abnormality is increased by one up to a maximum of five. And then suppression immune. I'm sorry? Okay, before I even get to react to that, the limit of stuff? Prudence. Okay, I'm sorry. It... Uh, what? We get to have... M we get to freaking double what we have? Oh. Oh, we finally have a second pale weapon. We have so many... Oh. Oh, our gear just skyrocketed. Oh, my... Oh my god! Okay! Well, we just got a heck of a lot stronger. Thanks, Gaburra! Alright, Facey Randy, I know as much as you love that gun, I gotta be honest, that gun is a lot of trouble. So... Okay, Cozy can finally put on the armor set that he's been wanting. Where is he? I've lost him. Here he is. I knew where he was the entire time. Cozy is finally in his signature suit. Face it, Randy. You, my friend. You will put on Smile. Even though I know you love your gun, I gotta be honest, that gun is a lot of trouble. So, I hope you'll be okay with the giant mace instead. And if you don't want the mace, next time we find a uh, gun that doesn't pierce everybody, we'll give that to you instead. Okay, so here's the big thing. Who gets the second pale weapon? Now, this is a big choice. Whoever gets this pale weapon gets to really show off that they... They have a sword that only Sally has had for weeks. They get to join the pale weapon gang. A truly secluded gang. So, I figure him having the left suit is, you know, it's a nice change of pace. 
Heaven Knight, I am very highly debating giving the uh, Justicia. Really, really leaning towards it. We're going to see. Now, I gave uh, Aeon, Cobalt Scar, and Smile. I think it looks pretty legit with it on. Um, it'd be better if his armband was red, but eh. Facey Randy, I went ahead and gave Smile. Kura, I went ahead and gave the second Magic Bullet suit. Sheeta has the suit of desire. I gotta be honest, I really like how Sarah looks, so I, I don't know if Sarah's equipment is even going to change past this point because she just looks legit. I don't know what it is about this look, but I really, really like it. Um, Sally has Paradise Lost on, so I mean, I, I don't really see her changing out this. Amaterasu got the second Cobalt Scar. And he's still a Sanguine Desire. Maybe we'll change that at some point. Evan! Co. Has on Sound of a Star and Solemn Lament. Grapes on Vine has his set of Letitia. Cozy finally has his own suit. Callie is still wearing the full set of Smile. Robert is current... Well, we need to, we need to get him um, the mask. I also... Did, uh, did you have a specific outfit you wanted? I know you want the mask, but did you have an outfit you wanted? That These are some of the things I need to start keeping track of. Marcos, mwah, looking fresh. Uh, Yukari, we need to get a new suit for because our galaxy is, eh, could be better. And then Caden is rocking the lamp set because he has been so freaking abused that he deserves a little bit of swag. Oh man, you really do just get more from everybody. Wait, we can get a second Solemn Lament. Yeah, why not? You know what, Caden? You are basically the Kenny of this place. You die so freaking often that to make up for it, you may have Justicia. Enjoy it. Until, well, until you die can't use it and then you know it'll probably go to something else but still enjoy it for now i immediately understand why it is that you guys said that i missed out there's a freaking jelly girl in this game okay you had me at the magical girl you pulled me further with them hips and now you're telling me that there's a freaking jelly girl? Oh! When you approach the containment unit, unit, you will be able to see branches that intertwine it. Those things are dried to such a crisp that a single touch would render them to death. They look too horrible to be called plants. Eyes are long gone, feasted on by birds and bugs. Cursed by the witch, the princess fell asleep and they lived happily ever after. Hmm. Sally's, I was gonna say, Sally's taking an awfully long time to get her. All right, let's see. Was attachment a mistake? Considering it started off with one minus, I'm gonna assume it's not. If Sally feels like they may want to ignore some of the safety and sanitary. Uh, Jelly Girl gave a lump of slime to the first employee who performed any work other than repression. Uh, the lump healed their SP and raise their success rate. However, determine how the lump lumps effects change according to the state of DO3 of 109. When DO3 109 one completed repression, the quip loss counter lowered. So Sally can't do repression on it, or else it's bad news. Employees who are in the same area as DO3 what? Employees who are in the same area as DO31091 have a low chance of being infected by the slime. Those who are infected by the slime can be distinguished with a trace of slime on their cheeks. Uh, employees who interacted with her also have a low chance of infection. When enough time passed after infection, their, their skin was completely merged with the slime and the infected employees turned into redacted. No. The counter dropped to zero when the number of Slimes, I assume, took up more than 50% of the department 
while still alive. So are we just screwed? Is she just gonna infect everybody now? Go figure. And yeah. I mean, Sally's still fine. Um, everyone else might be a, a slime now. Ooh, Magical Girl's coming out to help. Everyone else might be a slime, but you know what? At the very least, Magical Girl is here to help. She missed all of them. Good to know. She's like censored levels of freaking danger. It's legit like a zombie apocalypse. You have to stay away from the slimes or you turn into one. One touch and you're done. Okay, so I did a little bit more research on them. And expectedly, it's in the left. So, also I found out if you just left click and drag, that's much easier than trying to do the scroll wheel. So, um, here's, oh, here's what I found out about uh, Jelly Girl. Whoever gets the heart is basically a walking plague. And you can't get rid of it. Good. So Marcos is the permanent lover of Jelly Girl. He literally cannot move from her or he will infect everyone and everyone will die. Now, as far as her, let's see. Snow White's apple. Uh, she is a Vav. So, apparently, she has a Quiploth counter of 1, immune to black damage. If she escapes, she um, slowly puts, like, a slowing route across the entire hallway. I'm, I'm having a lot of trouble explaining these. Basically, she goes into a hallway, she spreads roots, the roots permanently slow, and even after she's suppressed, the roots still stick around. And they only go away on the next day, seemingly. As for her weapon, it's another black weapon. Um, and then her ego suit is a Vav. Meh, resistances, nothing incredible. So, yeah, she's pretty much done. Well, remember what I said about one mistake leading to a restart? Hey, we just encountered it. Marcos is dead and Melting Love is free. So, I'm gonna look at her stuff. Uh, she has a black weapon, of course she does. Um, pretty good suit. For an Aleph suit, surprisingly weak? No, I say for an Aleph suit. But otherwise, this is just a really good suit. Uh, she heals from red damage, very weak to black. Uh, takes neutral from white, takes slightly reduced from pale. He's done it! And I didn't even use the rabbits. Huh. <laughs> oh, finally. Freaking Tiffereth was so annoying. Although, we got a green midnight, so that was a wah, easy win. Easiest win of my life. <sighs> no one died. Alright, so it only took 40 minutes, so this one wasn't as bad as Gaburra. But man, I feel like this one just took me overall more tries, just because I had to learn um, about the midnight events. Oh, relief. That is, oh, feels great. 009, T09, remember the melody. Oh, isn't this... These are tools, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Um, happy birthday. Something mighty horn. This is the train one. This is the melody one. Man, we, we're seeing a lot of repeats, so there's really not that many tools. Um, we'll, we'll take that. Why not? Enoch? Have you ever heard of the nest? I hear they throw a festival every single day there. I want to dance, Enoch. I'm gonna stomp my feet and let happiness take over my body. Lisa, if you take a bit of time to look around here, it's quite nice too. But we aren't allowed to go anywhere. Karma just wants to keep us confined here. She's a good person. 
I hope you'll open up you'll open up to her soon. I don't wanna get to know anyone else. What I want is to be with you. I can't promise to be next to you forever. There's a lot of things I've been mulling over for quite some time. And I thought I may find some answers for them here. Some of my thoughts may be so absurd that the answers to them might not exist at all. Or even if the answers do exist, they might vanish soon too. But in the process of searching for, the, for those answers, I'll be able to cast off my shell. Not to be confused with my robotic shell that I'll have in the future. <laughs> then I can fly away at least, leaving my heavy body behind. Sometimes I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know where you want to go, but promise that you'll take me with you, Enoch. Uh. Oh, he's here. I guess we gotta go now. It's gonna get dark and cold soon. Let's head inside. Yeah, soon. Soon cold days will come. Even though I had never thought of them as family or someone that I needed to care for, I made it my job to bring the children back home to ease Carmen's busy schedule. I see them, those young kids running towards me, those children who survived the outskirts, the two we saved. I thought I could do it all on my own. I wanted to show Tipworth how mature I became when he got back one day, but there was no end to the disappointment and Tipworth never got any better. I couldn't stand the silence without an answer. So, I thought. I thought I'd rather... I'd rather hide my disgust and guilt I was so used to, as if the feeling never existed in the first place. But whenever I see Tipper's empty smile, my heart feels as if it were being covered in dark ash. Well, shattered into a million pieces. I knew Tipper could never go back to how he used to be. I was aware that we could never return to the happy days we spent together. But I was about to abandon Tipperth just because it was too hard for me to endure. All while knowing that he was the one who suffered the most. Tipperth, are you done with all your busy work? And torturing the manager with the <laughs> with the really hard suppression? We're going to be late. Let's get going. The sun will set soon. Please hurry, Lisa. I Right. My name was Lisa once. Tipford doesn't remember his name anymore, but from time to time he calls me by my cast-off name. What did Tipford want out of all this, even after sacrificing himself? Who was he waiting for? Ugh. Even while he was being discarded? Was it all worth it to him? I don't know. I've never, ever, held any expectations in my life. But I'll try counting on you now. I want to believe that there's a reason for every sacrifice that was made. And to know that eventually, everything will be okay. The expectation for the meaning of existence. 60%. Your scenario is reaching an end soon. Just do as you've done before. Although the energy you've collected will not be supplied to the outside, that doesn't mean your work was for nothing. Or that this place no longer serves a purpose. My goal? Are you finally asking me now, after all this time? Of course, it's the same as yours. The conclusion of the script we have. If not, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't have a reason to go through all this trouble to help you. The idea that I'm sitting at the bottom, oblivious to what is happening up there, it is an idea that you might think of as true. However, it is in truth you who is unknowing. Pain, agony, regret, and the shadows of the past that would never release their grip on you. They've spent quite a number of days with you, but it is nothing compared to our time together. In the end, they never got to know you to the fullest. Those who could not accept their fate seem to have directed their anger towards you. Such as that one man, he who gradually broke himself whenever he was ordered to redact information. Yes, Odd. The unnecessary leakage of emotion is unfavorable. There is something I need to show you, so you can understand. 
It once was an employee named Anya. She lived with her parents and her little sister. She eagerly wanted to study, but her family's financial state wouldn't allow her. Still, she tried to join one of the wings. However, she just wasn't good enough for them. Poor Anya was struggling to figure out what to do next. She even considered ending it all as a last resort. That was until she received a letter from the wing. A letter that had a simple yet magical line penned to it. You are quite qualified to join the Lobotomy Corporation. Awestruck, Anya read through the letter over and over again. It didn't seem like anyone was pulling a prank on her, nor that it was a mistake on the mail courier's part. For a brief moment, Anya wondered if she could even apply, if she even applied to work at Lobotomy Corporation at all. But she su she, ah. but she soon shook. That's a tongue twister. That thought off, at least while doing this voice, that was not important in the slightest. I took the role of the courier. I was the one who delivered the letters to people. I evaluate candidates to determine if they may join here or not and bring a miracle to those who are qualified. Anya was not selected because she had excellent skill. She had a common trait that every person we hired had, but wasn't aware of. As you know, to become a feather, a part of the wing, one has to be immensely better than ordinary people. Who could Anya, who dropped out of high school, had no special talents, and lived in the back streets, manage to get into our company? Would her family finally be able to pursue happiness? All of this happened ten years ago. During those ten years, her sister fell ill and passed away, along with her parents. Where is Anya now, with her entire family gone? She is asleep down here. It is wholly under my jurisdiction to handle this, but I'll grant you access just this once. Call her up, please. Invoke her. Now Anya is at work, feeling like she is a brand new employee who just joined the company, completely oblivious to the fact that it has been ten years since she actually joined us. You could perhaps choose to pay a small cost to augment her virtues such as fortitude or prudence, if you wish. Now try to erase her, please. I don't want it. How do you feel? The Anya who was killed by a monster, and the and that Anya, which, uh, whom you just erased, are one and the same. They both evanescently lost their lives. It is such a futile action to wake them and erase them to slumber again and again. Both your attachment to the employees and the Sephiroth's care and devotion poured into them become meaningless here. Everything that moves and is alive in this facility is on pause. They await the next morning with their, with their eyes shut tight every night. Those of the layers above did not know that. They spent themselves emotionally for the deaths with which they were presented. Bearing obscure resentment in their hearts, they put all the blame on those like you. Then they crumbled, just like that. I urge you not to worry about me. I will not dare to do such a thing. I've always wanted to be an important part of your life. Something tells me his suppression is going to be that he's just omega obsessive about us. All humans are born with desire. What is important is how it is controlled. It is not simply a problem of the individual. Once desires greatly affect how they see the world and how they perceive the people in it. To hear and see only what one wants to hear. What is truly needed for humans is to tune the desires between oneself, others, and the world, perhaps. If we can attain that balance, it may be possible for us to give birth to great things. Tifereth synchronization complete. The base number of managerial bullets is increased by 30%, and the pale shield bullet is unlocked. Okay, so we didn't get it from old man. We got it from them. Okay. That eh, makes sense, at least. Uh, fortitude, if you please. Shall we step ahead with this research, then? Yes, please. 
<sighs> well, we did our goal. And even though Callie looks a little bit beat up, we have managed to do two core suppressions. Ivanko got a little bit beat up too. Okay, I spent a majority of Tiferet's freaking um, meltdown trying to get the mask for Robert and trying to get the like eye patch for or the blindfold for Cozy, and neither wanted to drop. I realized it's a two percent chance each. But god dang, it just wouldn't drop. Like, we got the eyeball thing for Yukari without even trying. Ugh, alas, that is just how it goes. Woo-wee! So, that is going to do it for this episode of... The Lobotomy Corporation. And in the next one, we... Maybe we'll try to... By the way, uh, hang on. This just shot into mind, and I need to say it. We did quests twice while doing the suppressions. Is that supposed to be the case, or did we just luck out? Well, regardless. Ton of progress. We got two quests done for Hakma. We beat freaking Gabura. And we finally managed to do Tifereth, which means we don't have to worry about meltdowns on any of these eight abnormalities ever again. I hope. <sighs> 29 LOB points that we could just mess around with. I'm not sure what I want to spend them on. We have four new employees, and honestly, I don't feel like we need much more than that. Like, we've managed with this amount of employees for a very, very long time. So the extra four almost feels like plenty. Also, um, uh, where is it? Her. She is going to be rough to fully, um, to fully figure out. I think what we might have to do is we might have to save her for like the end of the day and uh, spam her out as much as we can once the end of the day hits and then hopefully we'll be able to uh, figure her out. And then we also had her fully figured out. Oh, we're one point short. Um, So she's not too bad. I'd say she can get a little bit out of control though and make everything a bit harder because of her slowing thorns that she leaves permanently. So you have to be quick on the suppression with her, or else you are going to suffer for the day. But that's going to do it for this episode of Lobotomy Corporation. All in all, I think this was a very successful episode. Oh, so many people have such good gear now. Like, you couldn't ask for a better upgrade than what today had. I could have sworn I remade Mao, but apparently I didn't hit confirm or something, because Mao is supposed to be here. Um, so we'll just ignore that. So, be sure and let me know who wants to be the second magical girl of the corporation, and who would like the jelly armor from the jelly girl. Obviously, it's more black damage, and I gotta tell you. Um, we need more red and pale damage than we do white and black. But, meh, that's okay. So, hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.